Yeah, so I guess some um, practical tips for becoming a full-time activist. Number one, uh, this is the most important thing um, that you need, otherwise you're not going to, is a burning desire to make a difference. Okay, you have to have a very strong purpose. It has to be purpose-driven. Um, you have to be driven by what's going on to animals um, and you have to really have a burning desire. If you don't have that, don't even bother because it's going to be all fun and interesting at the start. It's going to get hard. There's going to be ups and downs. Not everyone's going to always support you. Your friends aren't always going to support you. Other vegans aren't always going to support you. Meat eaters are going to attack you. <laughs> so if you don't have that driving purpose, there's no point even going for it. Like you really have to have that. And I still have it. And I the reason I started was because I had it really it was really pronounced does burning desire in my chest and i couldn't even sleep and when i did sleep i woke up thought i just wasted wasted another few hours sleeping what am i doing i need to you know do do this now you need that okay now then there's a that 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 will lead you to uh through the journey and it will keep you speaking for the animals and don't ever forget that and if you do forget it like for a, for a moment go back to the reason why you started it's always about the why the why will keep you going and keep you fueled. And then practically, like how do you like on a practical level do become a full-time activist? The the why will drive you there. <laughs> so you'll find a way. It the, the way will be shown because your passion and your purpose will be so pronounced that it will just um, methodically lead you there. But the way it happened for me, like this is my scenario, might be different to yours. Um I was working 40 hours a week as a bricklayer, uh, a, a laborer, shoveling sand and mixing concrete and stacking bricks in the, in the heat, getting a very sm mediocre wage. It was very small wage. Um, and I decided to quit that job, right, because it was taking, sucking away too, too much of my energy and I really wanted to start filming videos. Um, and then I, by virtue of some type of, synchronicity um got offered a job like two weeks later doing three days a week as a traffic controller now a traffic controller in australia you're going to get really good money you can you can work night shift you can you can kind of select your hours with some places you can do part-time select your hours um it's a really good ticket to have a traffic controller's ticket now i was making the same amount of money in three days uh, standing on the roadside, setting up signs and stop, stop, stop slow, or whatever, or sometimes just on my phone debating with meat eaters. Um, I was making the same amount of money in three days and I was working a 40 hour week as a laborer for a brick, brick layer. So then I could balance a mediocre amount of work. I was eating oats and potatoes pretty cheap. I wasn't drinking alcohol. I was riding my bike everywhere. Um, and then I could uh, balance the rest of that time focusing on building a social media presence and, you know, f speaking for the animals. So that progressed into people seeing that I had something and that I was purpose-driven and I was speaking for the animals really well. And then many people wanted to get behind me. And once I had built up that foundation of people wanting to get behind me, I swallowed, you know, my pride and started a Patreon and accepted help because I wouldn't accept help before that. I thought I could do both. But then you, you make the decision between splitting 60% of your time for the animals and 40% of the time trying to survive. And I made the Patreon then. I didn't just make a Patreon. I built up a social media presence and started really getting into it and dedicated every single moment spare that I had to it. And I learned how to film and edit because I was p driven by that purpose. And, you know, that's how it worked. Now... When I went full-time activist, I was a full-time activist. Every moment, waking moment, I, all I talked about or thought about was how I'm going to get the next piece of content, how I'm going to edit this video, or how's the video going, and where can I go and film to you know, create an impact. These were all I was concerned with, and it consumed me to the point where I didn't, couldn't even build friendships with people because I was too concerned with you know, making this impact. That's how much it overtook my entire life. And most people don't want to do that. 
to be honest with you, most people aren't prepared to make that type of sacrifice to get where they need to go. And then when they get this platform, a bunch of disappointments come through like, oh my God, we're not all on the same team. Oh my God, I'm getting attacked left, right and center. So um, that's how it happens. Like this, this doesn't just fall on your lap. It's not going to be like that. For some people, they're really lucky. They bring something to the table right at the start and they really propel themselves into, you know, the, the higher levels of the social media world. But when you've got an explicit animal rights message, <laughs> people don't want to hear it, <laughs> for starters. So getting a following as an explicit animal rights activist is kind of, it's kind of hard because people don't really want to hear this unapologetic message. Like any type of campaign, any type of disruptive activity that you do to create media. Like I'm always taught, saying going vegan, go vegan, be vegan, everything. This, that, the other, be vegan is always the answer. It's always a consistent message. Unless you're vegan, you're paying for animals to be abused. It's always a consistent message, no matter what avenue you take to spread that. So you should apply those principles uh, principles to your, your disruptive activism as well. If you can get a really good solid message in with your disruption, you know, that compels people to... or makes them feel accountable and wanting to go vegan or like not even then obviously disruptions don't turn people vegan they leave messages in people's minds that are a seed and like advertisement and then the sleeper effect takes place and then they that that seed might flourish later on or that's what they were talking about or i think these things can be done not not as effective and i think they can be done more effectively depending on the message how strong the message is gary orofsky is one of the most experienced animal rights activists ever and one of the most effective ever and he always says no matter what you do um no matter what activism you do it has to be education based right now if you're gonna do your, your speeches at the school it's edu of course it's education based you're sitting down you're educating people right so if you're gonna do your disruptions try to squeeze in a little bit of education there even if it's sound bites or phrases <clears throat> um you know everything that we do should be even even direct action, you know, liberations, you know, if you can do some type of education off the back of that, even if you're covering your face and doing a post, an anonymous post, sending it to ALF to post, whatever, if you're doing all of these things, um, it's the best, the most effective way to do all of them is with some type of level of education. If you're just educating, amazing. But if you're coupling what you do, Tash, with ed education, that could even be more effective because you're going to get that education out to sometimes a million, two million people or the media. Everything gets much more complicated when you get a bigger platform and things like that, trust me. So everything gets, gets, gets a lot more complicated, especially in the vegan movement. There's lots of complicated people in there. So one, one piece of advice is that I would give to you guys here, no matter what happens, right, Always keep your activism focused on the animals. And it's going to feel hard at the times because the movement is full of different ideologies and political views and all of these things. And they're going to want to get you into it. They're going to want to get you into this side topic of whatever it is. But what you got to do in that scenario is make animal rights content in response. Make animal rights content in response. Um, there's Sometimes it's going to be hard. I respond to people about outside issues sometimes but publicly on my platforms i respond by making animal rights content someone in the vegan movement saying some stuff i'll make animal rights content and that will keep you on track just remember always remember that otherwise you're going to put all of your energy into f debating in the vegan movement about things that have nothing to do with animals and that's where you're going to burn out and you'll know when it comes up because it's going to come up it probably already has probably already has but uh, you'll know and you go, oh, shit, this is what Joey was talking about. <laughs> what do you think activism is? It's attention-seeking. <laughs> what, you want no one to pay attention exactly. while you're in the corner talking to yourself? <laughs> Fucking attention-seek. Do what, do what you got to do. Like, uh, like they don't... Un yeah. So if they don't want to get attention, fuck them. But if you're willing to do what it uh, takes to get the attention and you have courage... Do that because that's what's going to get the vegan message attention. If the message, make sure your message is on point. That's what matters. Don't matter how you get that attention. Your vegan message has to be on point. Obviously, no violence, but you know, um, be creative. But 
Don't let don't let people uh, bring you down. The, the brighter the, the brighter you shine, the more people will want to dim your light. This is the way it is. That you shine too bright in their eyes, they want to bring you down. Doesn't matter if they're on. They claim they're on the same team as you. Whatever animals team. Don't worry about all of that. Um, there's got, you're going to have a few people that you can trust in the movement and you can work with. Um, and don't be too concerned about being able to please everyone in the movement or anything like that. Remember, you work for the animals. Um, that's the most important thing. You're speaking for the pigs and the chickens and the cows. They don't give a shit about human shit. They don't care about that. They just don't want to stop suffering. So, um, yeah, that'll be my best advice. Stay focused on the animals. Don't worry about trying to please everyone. Get the attention that you, the animals need and make sure your message is very strong for when you get that attention so then people aren't going to get confused.